Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a special online event today. It's called Three Keys to Unlock Your Powers of Mediumship, an evidence-based path to communicate with your spirit guides and loved ones beyond the veil. My name is Stephen Dynan. I'm the founder, president, and CEO of The Shift Network, and I really am loving the opportunity to be here with you and a remarkable woman whose name is Suzanne Giesman, and she has really taken a pilgrimage into the further reaches of consciousness that's quite extraordinary you're going to hear about today and, and open up a pathway for other people to communicate across the veil in a way that has an evidential base, that is compelling, and that, and that really delivers life-transforming information. So we're in for a treat. She's been a uh, faculty on multiple programs now. I've had as many as 2,000 people in her programs who are just blown away by the possibility of really opening up this communication channel between the worlds that opens up all sorts of opportunities for healing and insight and moving forward. So with that said, welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Stephen. I just love the opportunity to share with even more people because this work is my passion and I can always tell that those who join us feel that passion as well. Yeah, just we've gotten incredible feedback from the people who have opened up this uh, channel of communication through your work and uh, we're just really blessed to have the opportunity to do so. So we're going to have this hour with Suzanne. We're going to take a deep dive, get a lot of good information. We're going to do a practice and we're going to have a chance to go much further in an upcoming program that is a refresh on a previous program that is very successful and that is really going to offer some new opportunities to uh, dive into this work. So Suzanne, let's start a little bit with your backstory because it really is an incredible story, frankly. And uh, so the, the story that propelled you to the work that you are now doing. I would not be doing this work were it not for the major life event that caused me to go down this path. I spent 20 years of my life as a Navy officer. I rose to the rank of commander and I was aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That's the head of the United States military. So images come to mind right, right away. You think I might have been a little bit by the book and I absolutely was. Uh, never dreamed that I would one day be a medium talking to dead people. That was, well, if I had talked about that, they probably would have taken my security clearance away. But uh, I was in the last aircraft in US airspace on September 11th and saw the Pentagon up close and personal. We actually flew over Manhattan. We were uh, the only aircraft in that airspace that day. And that was life-changing for me and told me that I needed to retire from the Navy and go live my dreams because other uh, people of my rank uh, were killed that day at the Pentagon, very close to retirement. And I just knew that uh, life was too short not to live it fully. I had uh, served a full career. So off I went sailing into the sunset, literally with my husband. That was our dream. And I found out that life catches up to you when there are certain life lessons you have to learn. And our life lesson came in the death of my stepdaughter. Susan was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. She was crossing the flight line at work and was struck and killed by lightning. And to make matters worse, she was six months pregnant with our only grandchild. And that's when I really couldn't run away from life anymore. And I started to look into what I'd heard that the spirit survives death. I don't want to get on too touchy a subject, but seeing her body at the funeral convinced me that there is something that animates this vessel and that this really is just a vessel. And so I began meditating back in 2006. I've barely missed a day since. That practice alone transformed my life, but nothing transformed it as much as finding out that Susan is still right here through a medium who gave us evidence that she's still around. And we were not going to have the wool pulled over our eyes. She really could not have known what she told us. And so being an author of uh, books already, I decided to write about mediumship, not knowing I would one day be doing mediumship. And I wrote the biography of two talented mediums, only to find out in the process that I could tune in to those who have passed as well. And once I found that out, the possibility of helping others find healing, like that medium who did the reading for us and brought through Susan, the ability to change lives in one hour through a session like that, 
I was all in and I dove in and I'm still learning to this day. I waited until I had hundreds of readings under my belt, was getting excellent evidence, had really studied how this works, but to show other people that we all have this ability. That's my passion now. So it's a it's an honor to be both a medium and a teacher of this topic. Well, well, thank you for taking those really that incredibly difficult circumstance and turning it into an opportunity for service. So thank you yeah. for that. And one of the things that you you've spoke to a couple times there was the was the, the need for evidence, and I think you know most people who are approaching mediumship for the first time, or even for a second or third time, they're going to be going in with a pretty skeptical eye of like, oh, who is it? Can I really believe this? And what's going on? And it's like you know, so I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about about honoring that impulse and why evidential mediumship actually is much more transformational for for people once they once it, you take the time to make sure that there's there really is solid evidence that is real. It, it really is, Stephen, because if if my husband and I, who were very left brain, he's a retired Navy captain, had found a medium who only gave us nice messages. Oh, your loved ones are here and they love you so much and they're fine. We would have walked away and said, I don't think that was our Susan. If they had told us things that might match her, we might not have been convinced. But evidence can convince someone. The types of things she told us, such as she's bringing a little baby boy with her who she wants to introduce to you. Yet that medium had no idea Susan was pregnant with a boy, that she's wearing a brown uniform. She didn't know she was a Marine. All kinds of evidence rocked our world. Now, having done readings for thousands of people now, I know that not everybody needs that evidence. Some people just know what our souls already know, that there's a greater reality. But I don't know who knows and who doesn't. So when we ask those in spirit to give us evidence every time that I do a session, we get the evidence and it speaks for itself. So it's transformational, it's irrefutable, and it completes the mission of letting your client, your sitter, as we use that term in mediumship, know that their loved ones are still right here. Stephen, if I could just add to that, I teach my students the test of any good reading is, did your sitter walk away from it and say, that was my loved one? Which is exactly what happened in that reading that my husband Ty and I went to that very first time. There was no mistaking it. And if you only get nice messages, you you leave kind of on the fence. Can you share a little bit why we, you consider this also a sacred process too? Because sometimes people associate like that more left brain, skeptical, analytical function. They don't think of that as as sacred, but you really are sort of seeing that that is like this allows the mediumship to be truly sacred. Yes, I, I had a conversation with another medium about this very topic recently, and I feel that that woman had not had a very deep and personal death in her family. Her, her uh, parents hadn't passed yet. She didn't have a child who passed. A spouse hadn't passed. And as a medium, her main concern was proving the continuity of consciousness. And that is a phrase that we mediums learn, especially if you study in England, like I did originally, the spiritualists in England teach that. Mediumship is to prove the continuity of consciousness. But I have to tell you, when you have somebody so near and dear to you pass, like my stepdaughter, Susan, to find out that she is still here to receive evidence that, yes, there is a continuity of consciousness, but that that heart connection is still here, that we can have an ongoing relationship, move forward with her, not leave her behind. What could be more sacred than that? I, I looked up the definition of sacred, and it means tinged with awe an air of reverence to me to show someone that their loved one is not dead and gone. They're still here. You can still talk to them and they hear you. That is awesome. And that is filled with reverence. And that is so much more than proving the continuity of consciousness. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks 
transition into talking about how do we begin to activate this in ourselves. And it sounds like the first thing that you you really say is first believing that we all can activate it in ourselves is probably the biggest stumbling block. But let's go into the three keys you wanted to discuss and you can set whatever context and really make clear the three keys to opening up this ability for us. Well, you said it, Stephen, belief is number one. Here I spent the first half of my life not believing there was a spirit world, certainly not believing I could do it. So number one, I never tried. And if you don't believe something's possible, it won't happen for you because we have these filters that just stay in place. So examining our thoughts and being willing to change them is huge and incredibly important for this work. So believe that there is a spirit world, a greater reality, a non-physical reality, and believe that you can attune to it as well. And we all have this ability because we don't tune in with the part of us that is a human playing a role. We tune in with the soul and all of us are always souls temporarily in human form. So once you understand that, and I go into that in all of my teaching, it's, uh, it's learning to then align, this is the second key, align with your true nature as a soul. So think of all the positive qualities that we naturally are drawn to in others, kindness, compassion, love. We live those regularly, our soul's light shines forth. If we clear out anything that's keeping our soul from shining, that makes our connection so much easier with the spirit world. They need us to be clear vessels to communicate through us. And then the third key is making that shift in the moment from human awareness, which is quite limited, to expanded awareness, which is the soul's true nature, far less limited. And once you learn what making that shift is like, how simple it is, like shifting a channel on a remote control, then you can tune into spirits anytime, anywhere. But I teach a method that takes us from that limited awareness to a much greater expanded state so not just in the moment, but in a dedicated session so that we can have an extended conversation with those across the veil. Well, I, I love that you're, in a, in a way, you're sort of saying that in order to communicate with our souls, you have to become your soul self first and then the channels yeah. open open uh, yeah. more easily. I love that because it's you can't separate it from the evolution of our own um, body mind either. So okay. so let's talk about that in terms of practical terms. So I'd like what would be the first step? So believing in the spirit world, we probably have a lot of tend to have a lot of residual conditioning, not wanting to be tricked, not wanting to kind of believe false things. And so particularly if you have a more skeptical background, um, how do you begin to sort of cultivate that belief in the that the spirit world is real and that we can make contact ourselves? Well, you do it, you, you change your beliefs by having personal experience. And I'll guide everybody through a practice before this event is over so that they can test the waters and get evidence. Once we start having those wonderful, magical moments of interacting with the spirit world consciously, then we really open up our belief system. These kind of God links happen all the time, but we can actually ask for special moments of interaction that can be validated. Good. And then in terms of like really shifting to the essential nature, um, so there's, so what do you recommend in terms of entering into a session? How do we prepare ourselves to make contact? Is it, do we need to have a, a meditative transitional process to sort of like shift gears more into that upper echelon of communication? I truly believe that some kind of a daily practice that really cements in us the awareness of who we are as souls temporarily in a human form is critical. If we miss more than a couple days of meditating, it's way too easy to get sucked into the human drama and forget there's another reality. So a simple practice, which I'll be going into in my upcoming course of just a few minutes a day makes all the difference in the world. Once you are practiced in entering the expanded state that's optimal 
for making a connection with those in the spirit world, you don't need a prolonged practice. We work on building the power is what I call it on a regular basis. So there's a noticeable difference between being in human mode and being in the power. And so to get into the power can only take a few seconds. This is the beauty of not needing to spend a half an hour to prepare when you want to do a session for somebody, because you do all of that preparatory work as part of a regular practice. And the benefit to us personally is that our light shines brighter. Our lives become more peaceful just as a result of doing this work. So it's a win-win all around. So yes. the shift into opening to who's here, how important is it to just open to whoever wants to show up versus somebody who's really targeted, like calling in a specific spirit, or, or is it you're kind of just open to whoever really has a message? It goes both ways. There are many times when perhaps a parent with a child across the veil tells me right up front, I want to hear from my child. And in the past, when I was very new at this, Stephen, it was kind of funny because I would bring through that child and we're getting the evidence and there would be perhaps a father in the spirit world or a grandmother and I literally blew them off. And I learned the hard way. You don't want to do that because your client, the sitter and the medium have their own limited ideas of what is needed for healing. But we have to learn to trust those with the higher perspective, which is not only our loved ones across the veil, but angels, spirit guides, and any aspect of consciousness with the higher perspective that knows what's for the greater good. So even when we ask to speak to a specific soul across the veil, it's really important to add, but whatever serves the greatest good for all involved in this session we'll be open to that. So I teach that it's good to just continuously scan the field, even when we zero in on one specific soul and make sure nobody else has stepped in or that we're missing someone that we haven't even noticed until that point. Hmm. What a great answer. So I think this leads into some of the uh, conversation around that's going to tee up your experiential too around guides. I imagine that just talking about guides is something that might not have been super popular in your position as a Navy commander, but uh -huh. it'd be great to just have a little bit of context of understanding your perspective on on our guides on the other side and and how they work with us and how they can how they play a role in a mediumship session. Oh my goodness, guides are so much a part of our lives. And you're absolutely right, Stephen. I didn't believe in spirit guides, even when I was a baby medium. I was doing readings for people, but teachers and others have talked about spirit guides, but I didn't have the experience yet. And my limited background really kept me in a box. It's so important as we do this work to continuously look and find the borders of the box that we're in. It's just part of being human. But I had several examples where a guide came in and was talking to me and telling me things about my sitter that I couldn't deny, like the, the time that my main spirit guide was telling me, your client has cancer, you need to tell her. I could see black spots in front of her, but I didn't trust myself. And I didn't wanna say something like that and be wrong. And here's this guide who I haven't really fully embraced yet saying, tell her. And finally, I just knew I had to trust. And I said, you know, I'm seeing black spots and floating in front of you. I couldn't even say the C word. And my client very matter of factly said, oh, yes, it's metastasized. And I said, so, you know, you have cancer and, uh, she said, yes, I was hoping for uh, some guidance today. And we went on to get it from that guide. And he gave guidance in wording that would never have come out of my mouth with information that I didn't even know. And from that day, and this was many years ago, I knew to trust the guides, to interact with them regularly. I have a new guide. She actually helped teach some of my courses with the, the uh, Shift Network. And every day she helps me. In my readings, uh, we use guides for specific issues like a mediumship guide, but we all have main spirit guides 
And then again, specific guides that can come and go. Your main spirit guide has been with you from your first breath and will be here till you take your last. They know you better than anybody, better than you know yourself at the human level. But sometimes some of your own loved ones who pass can become a guide if they're advanced enough that they can work with you in that capacity. I often see children across the veil who are young adults or adults, you know, children of my clients, so they could be in their 20s, who show me that they're guiding, they use this symbol, they're guiding their siblings now. And I think that's a beautiful connection that they have. But if we don't know we have guides, we miss out on a lot. We don't think to ask them for insights to ask them to help us. And I believe it's part of the guide rule set that we have to ask first. They'll jump in in extreme cases and help us. But when you learn to trust that they're there and ask for their help, it's phenomenal. And they don't mind giving evidence that they're here. Uh, I play a game with my, my guide, Brenda, every time before I do a session to ask her for evidence about things I don't know. And it's it's not because I need it. I do it because it's fun and magical and wondrous. <laughs> what a great, great perspective <laughs> on it. Well, that leads naturally into the uh, experiential you want to lead. So why don't you go ahead and tee that up and guide us? All right. And I'm going to, without going through overtly the steps delineating them, I'm going to guide you all through the process that I use to connect. And it's so that we can get into a nicer expanded state not super deep because we're not going to take that much time, but we're going to ask a guide to step into our awareness and we're going to ask for some evidence that you can validate in the coming days. So if that sounds exciting, you need to just set aside any disbelief. It was very helpful to have a childlike, playful attitude like, I wonder what's going to happen now. This will be fun. That is great for lifting your energy. So why don't you just clear off anything that's on your lap, get comfortable. And if you're sitting, put your feet flat on the floor. If you're sitting on a bed, just make your legs straight. But let's close our eyes with the intention of meeting a guide. And let's imagine that shaft of light coming down from the heavens, going around us through the vessel, the body, and anchoring us into the center of the earth. And now in order to slow down the busy brain, let's take in a nice deep breath. Pull that air all the way into the heart area. And now exhale slowly, slower than you inhaled. Nice and slowly and release any tension anywhere in your body. This time, let's breathe in again with the intention of relaxing to the count of nice slow four count. Let's exhale to the count of six. And any fears, any doubts, anything that doesn't serve you, just let it flow out through your fingers and toes as you exhale. And let's do that one more time so we get in a nice expanded state. Breathe into about four. And as you exhale, feel yourself sinking deeper, deeper, deeper into a beautiful, relaxed state. Your mind is alert, but your body is relaxed. And now, so that your light shines brighter, so that your soul shines through your aura, bring to mind something for which you're very grateful today. Feel that gratitude surge in your heart. As you do this, the light at the center of you, your soul's light that never goes out, just burns a bit brighter, but you can turn it up just with your own will. So turn that light up and fill your entire energy field with that light. Feel the warmth of it filling your entire aura. Bring to mind someone who brings you great joy. All of this we're doing to lift our vibration and make it easier to connect. What brings you happiness and joy? It could be a person, a pet, an activity. Just know that in basking in this feeling of that, you're lifting your vibration. 
So by now you're feeling more relaxed and you're also feeling lighter and brighter. See if you can sense the edges of your energy field, a few feet or yards out from your physical body. It's filled with light now. We're going to take in a nice breath and expand it with the out breath. Let's hear that breath as you expand your aura. As you're doing that, the boundaries of your aura go out, out, out faster than the speed of light and fill all of creation. You are now limitless. With the intention to meet with a guide, we're going to set aside our limited nature as a human by stating silently, I surrender that focus. And now with the intention of stepping into our soul awareness, which is what we always are, but we're not aware of it most of the time, simply state silently, shift. And now you are in soul awareness in this expanded state. There is one guide who already knew you were going to do this exercise today. It's a guide that works with you often. And we now invite that guide to step into our awareness and merge with us. Blend so completely that we sense some presence, some physical symptom, or have some experience that lets us know that guide is present. Merge now by inviting them. Say, come now. And for a moment, experience whatever changes in your awareness. What images might you see? What words might you hear? What sensations in your body arise? Trusting that a guide has stepped in, even if you don't sense them, simply trusting. See if you can sense the qualities of this guide. Does this guide feel more masculine or more feminine or a nice mix of both? Let's send this guide gratitude for the help that they've given you so far in your life and send them our assurance that we're looking forward to working with them moving forward more consciously. Do that from the heart with gratitude and ask the guide to send us some love back. What do you sense? Knowing, trusting, believing, you have made contact with a non-physical being who knows you better than you know yourself, who has the higher perspective, ask directly of this guide, what do I need to know now? It takes no more time than that to receive an answer. Send gratitude to the guide for what was received. And guides never mind being put to the test. In fact, they love answering our requests. And from the heart, we ask this guide, in the coming days, send me a sign that we truly did connect just now. I would like you to send me a specific sign. And that sign is... And now you fill in the blank, you doing this exercise. 
The specific sign I would like in the coming days is this. Your guide has noted this. Send them gratitude for this time together. And affirm that you look forward to meeting with them again. They will step out of your awareness now, but they are always around, always ready for you to connect with them. So simply shift back into human awareness. There's no need to have a prolonged session coming back. It's simply a shift in the channel. Come back fully into your body. Perhaps wiggle your fingers and toes to embody your awareness with a nice smile on your face of appreciation. Welcome back. Well, thank you for that. That was that was very moving. And yeah, I feel like there's something that opened up and I'm sure all of us are will eagerly await our, our signs from the other side as well. And you know, Stephen, there's something really important to mention here. In that pause where you ask for a specific sign and you think about what it is I'm going to ask for today, what sign? Your guides, if they want to validate something, are the ones who actually put the thought of what to ask for in your mind. That is something I've come to learn over the years, and it's magical. They know what you're going to be doing in the next few days. They can see ahead what's coming together. And just imagine your guides across the veil going, this is really going to be fun because they're going to run right into that sign they asked for. Like the, the, hopefully you all ask for something that is possible, not a not something outrageous and beyond the the laws of our universe. But there was this one example where I asked for a uh, a silver medallion. Why did I ask for that? It just popped in my mind. Well, I know now it came from my guide who knew I was flying on Delta Airlines the next day, who nudged me on the plane without my realizing it was him to pull out the magazine from the back of the seat, open it up. And there it says, if you get our frequent flyer program, you can earn silver medallion status. And so I look forward to everyone having a magical moment when whatever it is you ask for comes into your awareness. You don't have to look around for it like this. It will just be like a two by four that hits you over the head because you asked so clearly. And when you get that sign, document it. And keep asking for signs like that, and you'll get this list of evidence that will leave no doubt in your mind. You're not alone, and you're very much guided. Hmm. Well, what a beautiful way to start a relationship with a guide. And uh, so how do you recommend cultivating that relationship as you uh, evolve a practice of mediumship? Well, hopefully it's so much fun and that even just this very first time of asking, what do I need to know now, you find it valuable. So you're going to want to do that every day and it doesn't take long. It's incredibly fun to get answers, to ask for the evidence, to get the signs. And you start to realize you're never alone. I mean, throughout the pandemic, people are in lockdown. They can't get together with other human beings, but you can have an ongoing relationship with your guide and they literally can have conversations with you. It's, it gets to the point where you can learn to write. This is something I teach people how to hold that expanded state of awareness and write conversations. For an entire year, I had a conversation with an incredibly high being and the wisdom and insights that came through changed my life. That's why I say this is an ongoing journey it always gets better it never ends it's magical it's fun and wondrous are there areas of uh guides that you it's good to understand their expertise and where they might be less uh less skilled as well as you sort of start to work with guides well, they'll let you know. And, 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 you know, this is the important thing, Stephen. We don't have to know exactly which guide is helping us at any one time. Just ask for the highest being that has what I need now to come in. But you can become sensitive enough that you know who's helping you. Like my mediumship guide, Brenda, I remember asking her a specific question and she basically said, that one's above my pay grade. I'm not suddenly all knowing because I've crossed the veil. She was my friend here in physical form and is now my mediumship guide. Other guides have a higher uh, perspective and they can help you. But uh, 
just trust that the one that you need is the one that comes in. I'd love to share with everybody tonight a new little checklist that I was just given in the last month by my team, if that's okay. Let's do it. Okay. And Anybody that's ever been around military people knows that we love acronyms. It's a great way of remembering processes and long terms. And you just take the first letter of each step in the process and it helps you to use that mnemonic device. So the latest tool that I've been using is just this little checklist for, am I ready to connect with spirit? And I call this process, here goes. Here is not an acronym. Here just means I'm centered. So you sit down with the intention of connecting with a loved one, either your own or someone else's, and you take a few centering breaths. You're here, you're present. And then G-O-E-S is what makes sure you're ready to connect. So G in GOES stands for ground your energy. I do that by imagining a shaft of light that comes down around me. It's connecting me to the spirit world, to the heavens. This is metaphorical because we can't not be connected. And the spirit world is not just up here. It is all that is. It's all around us. It interpenetrates us. But this visual of being connected to the heavens is very effective. And that light comes down around you and you anchor that shaft of light into the center of the earth. That's grounding. And energy flows from high to low. So through the process of G and goes grounding, you're now this perfect conduit for spirit information and presence and awareness to come through you. The O in goes, here goes, stands for open. Open your energy centers so that they're vibrating as highly as possible and you're ready to receive and send information back and forth with the spirit world. And that's simply done with intention. I picture my seven energy centers, the chakras, and I open them. And then E stands for expand. I picture my aura out in the sphere around me and I just expand it until I completely am the entire field of all that is, all consciousness, all possibilities, anyone I want to connect with, I'm merged with them. And S in here goes means shift that channel. And it's that simple. It's your intention that takes you from limited human awareness to expanded awareness of the soul. And the proof that you've made that shift is when you now reach out and connect with the spirit, you start to get evidence, you validate it later. So here goes, I'm centered, I'm grounded, I've opened my energy field and expanded it. Now I shift and who's here? That's great. I love the acronym too, to keep it, keep it simple to remember. You have so many great stories that you can share. I'm wondering if you might share a story of how, you know, in your own readings with people, that there was a, some piece of evidence that really broke open for them and led to a whole deeper life transformation as a result. Well, I would love to share with you a very recent one and very timely since we're, we're just coming out of the pandemic. And it's filled with evidence, not just one or two pieces. I was asked to do a reading for a woman and her mother, both of them on Zoom with me at the same time. And they're in India. And she's given me permission to share this story because it was so healing for her family. She hopes it'll be healing for others. But I don't remember if I knew her father had passed or not, but he sure came in and made his presence known right away. And one of the first bits of evidence I always ask those in spirit to show me is how did you pass? He took my breath away. So I knew he had lung issues. Literally, I couldn't catch my breath. And to have that physical validation in my own body is part of the evidence for me. And then I simply knew through claircognizance that he had some kind of an illness and in, like an infection is how I described it. And his daughter said, yes, he passed of COVID. I haven't brought through too many people who passed from COVID, but this was a very stunning case where the father said in spirit to his daughter, stop feeling so guilty. You couldn't have changed this. Now, to me, I think, why would anybody feel guilty about this? 
Turns out she is a physician and he passed in the hospital where she works. So we have some evidence and right away with a loving message, you shouldn't feel guilty about this. And he said, the more you carry that guilt around, it's like a stone on your heart. You need to soften that. And I laughed because he said, I said, he's handing you a teddy bear. And I have to be honest and show a little bit of my ignorance here. I honestly almost filtered that and didn't share it because in my ignorance, I thought, they don't do teddy bears in India like we do here, which of course now I know is ridiculous, but this was a beautiful moment because this woman said, wait, and she went off screen and came back carrying me the teddy bear that this father and spirit gave her just this past Christmas. So do you see how they work in the evidence just like that? Now he started talking about how much he loves mom's cooking and of course his wife is right there on the camera and he shouted at me curry and again i wanted to filter it because i think now am i making a cultural assumption well it turns out that his mother had been making a meal once a month since he passed and taking it to their local priest and that month she made curry and wondered if her husband knew about it without even asking me he reported on that he wanted to make sure his loved ones knew that he heard them talking to him even after he passed. He said, keep talking to me. I hear you. You don't have to beg. I heard him say this word for word. When I repeated that message from him, his daughter went like this. And she said, just before this session with you, I was saying, Father, please come through. I beg you. I beg you just stunning evidence to me of what I know to be true from thousands of readings that our loved ones hear us when we talk to them. So I tried a new technique because as I said, we're always learning. This is what I love about mediumship. It's a constant evolution. There is never an end to how clear we can make this connection. So in that reading, I tried a new technique to see the spirits more clearly. And for the first time, I was able to actually see this man's face. I usually simply feel them, hear them, sense them, know what's going on. But in this case, using a new technique, I described him with a mustache, with glasses, and not too tall. I remember even saying he looks about five foot eight. And both of them started celebrating because they said he was exactly five foot eight and had that mustache and the glasses. And finally... I said, your dad is saying, write me a letter I'll be reading over your shoulder. I just love that, that it's a way of focusing our attention on a loved one and anybody can do it. That may sound like a generic message, but by way of evidence, his daughter said, oh my gosh, I just saw a psychologist to help me deal with my grief. And the psychologist recommended I write a letter to my father. So again, to me, this shows dad knows what's going on and he's there to validate, I'll be reading over your shoulder. So after that reading was over, I received an email from this doctor, his daughter. And she said that the night before the reading, they couldn't sleep. They were so restless. They were desperate to hear from dad. They had a list of questions and he actually answered every one of their questions without them having to answer it. And both of them found so much peace, so much relief from the evidence he brought through. They just knew without any doubt that dad is still with them. Hmm. Well, what an amazing story that brought tears to my eyes, like hearing some of those specific incidents. There's something, I don't, I don't know, even even for people who know that spirits are, are real, that there is life after death, it's like there's something that's very emotional to sort of feel that that ignition point of like, oh, of how, like when it's real again, it's still moving. Even if you conceptually like, oh, of course. That emotion, a lot of people feel that in, in my classes and my presentations, that's the soul just speaking to you saying, you know, this is truth. And this is the heart connection that we all enjoy with each other. And mediumship shows us that that connection doesn't end when the physical body dies. Makes total sense. 
Well, I think now would be a good time to talk a little bit about next steps and really developing this as a practice. And to um, just first of all, say how grateful we are to work with Suzanne. I, th I think you can tell from just the time we've had together how honest and clear and true she is and how really committed to serve she is with this work. So we're really blessed that she has agreed to again teach a program called Sacred Evidence-Based Mediumship, open to your highest self as you communicate with spirit guides and loved ones beyond the veil. This will follow the same basic contours as the first one that had 2,000 people participating. It was rave reviews, and there's going to be new nuances, different trajectories, new stories, practices. So it'll be a very fresh and live experience for people to go through together that basically follows a similar trajectory as, as the, the first that was so uh, beautifully received. So you can find this program laid out in detail at Sacred Call of mediumship.com sacred call of mediumship.com it's going to be a seven week program and really build the foundation for you to do this yourself Suzanne is very much a teach people to fish rather than give give them a fish kind of person so she wants you to be able to have this channel open this this trusted guidance this ability to sort of access information for yourself and potentially even for other people if you're called in that direction so that you can be a vehicle for this healing on a very personal level all the way up to collective guidance that, that needs to come through so Suzanne, I'd love for you to share a little bit about the seven week journey with people can take with you and, uh, and then give us a tour of the modules. Well, like you said, Stephen, this is the same course that I taught in the beginning of your introduction to mediumship, but it's fresh because things are always changing. So the basic teaching and the processes are the same. The stories will be new. And I always, even like tonight, when I shared my backstory, tune into spirit so that it comes through new every time. And so many more people are looking for guidance and looking for that connection that we decided as a group that it was worthwhile to share it again. So I'm not going at this like, hey, I already taught this course, but instead let's see how this material comes out this time. The reason I love doing the course with the whole group is that using this technology, the participants will be able to get into breakout groups afterwards and actually practice one-on-one -on -one with each other, practice discerning live the presence of spirits and guides. And then of course, we'll have that Facebook group where people can share experiences and interact between classes. Great, I'll, I'll call out the module titles. Module one is on evidence-based mediumship, the powerful difference. We covered the very, very basics of this in this session tonight, but I'm going to dive in deep about why it's so sacred with examples of how life changing this is. From the very start, we have to instill in everybody who's participating that, yes, it's magical. Yes, it's fun. I may use words like play, but this is serious work and it comes with a serious responsibility. I just taught a class last weekend and a woman who I never met came up to me and she said, may I hug you? You saved my life. And I have lost count of the number of people who have said that very same thing to me. A medium can change someone's life in one brief session. If we don't get the information correctly, if we don't follow my number one rule of do no harm, we can do harm, but we can prevent people from taking their own lives when they realize there's more to this life. That is a tremendous responsibility. And yet it is possible to develop a connection that's beautiful and clear and makes it clear to the person having this session that mediumship is safe, it's sacred and life-changing. So we really lay that foundation in the first module and talk about where is the spirit world? How is it possible that we can connect? So very foundational first session. Module two, achieving expanded awareness, the key to being a clear channel. It is the key. And so we'll talk about how do we expand our awareness? We did it briefly in the practice just now, but this is something that we can do in a moment or over prolonged periods of practice. I talk about the need to train ourselves to recognize the different states of consciousness, which ones are optimum for doing a reading and why. So we're really getting into the nuts and bolts, and this requires also an understanding 
of who you are as a soul. So I really love using analogies, metaphors to help us understand something that the brain has a hard time wrapping around. And I'll do my best to get a lot of people saying, oh, now I get it. Lots of ahas. Module three, making contact and building the power. Well, building the power is your consciousness. It's power with a capital P. It's that, that light that, that never goes out, but yet it's constantly refreshed from the sea of all consciousness. So what does it mean to be in the power? How do we build that at will and in general, raising our consciousness? Again, that's the win-win here. I'm gonna go into my seven-step process for connecting with higher consciousness. And Stephen, this is one of the things that people love about my courses. I hear a lot of times that some people will study with mediums and they say, okay, this is mediumship, go do a reading. And people say, but what do I do? And I have really broken down the process and there's no one process. I teach a variety of processes, but what makes that connection happen? And I teach very specific tools and you can pick and choose. Boy, what a blessing for those who just see the spirits anyway. They know they're here. They don't need a process. But even for people who've been seeing spirits their whole lives, they will receive tools and practices that take it to another level. Module four, going for gold, raising the bar with evidence. Oh, this is really diving into the difference between messages that can't be validated until we cross the veil and the evidence. And then we really dive in deep into the kind of evidence and the depth of evidence that we can get. It's stunning how we limit ourselves by thinking, oh, I could never get that from the spirit world. But once we start looking at how much information those across the veil can get through to us, it really adds to the way we can reveal their presence and leave no doubt by capturing their essence. So I show you how to do that and actually have some really great exercises for making a pact with our guides so that they work with the spirits across the veil and make sure the guides know what we want, know how we want to get it and make sure we get it. Module five, connecting with the right spirits, the dynamics of the sacred triangle of mediumship. Yeah, that sacred triangle is understanding that every player in a session, a reading is important, equally important. And the triangle is the medium, the sitter or sitters, like the example I gave of the man with COVID, his daughter and his wife were present. So they were both part of that triangle, one corner. And then those in spirit make up the third node of that triangle. So any one of those three aspects can change the dynamics in a reading and is utterly critical to the success of the medium's connection. So understanding what affects each of those players and how we can actually coordinate and manage the energy to the best of our ability while we're here in human form is gonna really make a difference in the results of the reading. Module six, dealing with the human side of mediumship. Oh, well, this is the biggest stumbling block for us, our human nature, our doubts, our fears, lack of trust in the spirit world. What happens when somebody says no, when you give a piece of evidence? I'm gonna really dive into what can cause us to drop out of soul awareness and go back into human mode and drop the link and how to overcome our human tendencies. Of course, that really requires, again, understanding more of the soul's nature. I love this stuff. And I love when we come to realize I'm not only human. And this module really shows that. And then finally, module seven, integrating and moving forward. Yes. I want to have participants leave with what I call a list of best practices in mediumship. And I already stressed my number one, do no harm. Uh, don't say anything in a reading 
that could possibly cause distress to your sitter. So we'll talk about best practices, how to continue growing in our ability to connect, how to continue raising our own vibration, how to get better as a medium, how to work with others here in human form and those across the veil to increase that connection. So it's not like we just leave you and that's it. We leave you with the tools to keep moving forward. Well, it's an amazing program, and I've just heard so many life-changing stories when people really open up this gift. Uh, so thank you for offering it again in this new form. Um, so I'll say a few other things about it. Again, you can find the full program laid out at sacredcallofmediumship.com. You get not only the seven 90-minute live sessions with Suzanne, which includes interactive exercises and Q&A time, you also get recordings of every session, both video and audio, as well as the word-for-word -word transcripts that you can work with, study, and highlight. There's small group time, as Suzanne mentioned, to connect with other participants and do practices together. There's weekly exercises and practices for home, as well as a Facebook community to enhance your journey and deepen your experience. On the page, you'll see there's a number of extra bonuses as well. There's a video teaching and worksheet from Suzanne called Everything is Energy. There's also a video teaching from Suzanne on a lesson in remote viewing. And remote viewing is a kind of a adjacent but similar skill set to this. Suzanne, you want to say anything about remote viewing? Yes, it's perfect, I feel, as an adjunct to a mediumship class because you would use the same processes. You need to learn to, to quiet the, the mind, to shift your consciousness to an expanded state, and it shows us that we are so much more than these bodies. So people have uh, really good experiences with the practice. It's fun, and like you just said, it's just the perfect add-on. Great. And there's also an ebook from Suzanne called Mastering Meditation, which is such a foundational skill. And when you sign up by midnight tonight, you're going to get five extra bonuses, which are the top five sessions from the Beyond the Veil Summit. This is really a preeminent summit that happens every year on traveling, communicating, and being able to uh, basically bridge across the veil to the other side. So this includes standout sessions from top teachers like Suzanne, Mark Anthony, Mark Pitstick, Marie Manucheri. Really great stuff to help enhance both your capacity and ability to reach across the veil yourself. So that's all available to you when you sign up by midnight, those extra five sessions, all the rest of the bonuses you get no matter when you sign up. And you're really in for a treat in terms of the community and the dedicated folks who you will join you on the journey. So it's going to be an amazing program. You can We've kept the investment really accessible for this, even with the, the seven live sessions, all the bonuses. It's just three payments of $109. You save 10% when you pay in full with one payment of $297. The course is going to start on December 1st and run Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And even if you can't make those live times, though, you still can get the full value by participating with the transcripts and the recordings and in the community as well. So I, I most invite you to go over to the page at sacredcallofmediumship.com and read through the testimonials. Marie from Sweden says, five stars, the best course ever. Excellent teacher, clear and concise. You know, it's just life-changing testimonials about doing this work, making that connection, and particularly in this era when we have had a lot of loss, a lot of transitions in the last year, and it really there's a lot of there's a lot more people that I think all of us have that we would like to make uh, an ongoing bridge with and a connection with that can really serve everyone moving forward. So this is a great opportunity to invest in building a skill set that you can really use for a lifetime. And you can do that at sacredcallofmediumship.com. So Suzanne, we just have a minute or two left. Anything that you haven't shared yet that you want to? It's simply that I'm also excited to see how this course comes out because the basic outline won't change. This course was given to me by my team in spirit, and it's very good material. Yet, like I said earlier, I'm going to tune into them and see what has changed in just a year. What new material or how can we present it in a way that is what we all need right now. So I'm very excited. It, it never gets old and just such an, a joy to share this with all of you. Well, you just emanate so much joy, and it's really clear that how much this work has changed your life. You know, to go from the sort of a conventional high status arena, like the Navy commander, into a little bit of like a far out there position like this, it's such, it's got a great blessing to all of us to, to, that you've took that journey and that you're sharing that journey and really helping other people open up this life changing gift as well. So thank you for doing that. An honor. Thank you. 
Great. And thank you all for joining. And you're warmly welcome in Suzanne's upcoming program. And you can do so at sacredcallofmediumship.com. And you get those top five sessions from the Beyond the Veil Summit when you sign up by midnight. So thanks all. Many blessings.